studied the um, coniferous forest and how to film a round of survival there. So the coniferous forests are mostly located in the northern hemisphere of the earth, um, so kind of up in Canada and kind of in Russia and those areas um, up north. Uh, it's a very cold area. Um, there's plentiful land for opportunities for this biome to exist. Um, so it's just right there in the blue. Uh, the climate here is very cold. You can see um, here's three different coniferous forest um, climatographs and so they are pretty similar. The temperatures on the side kind of vary. Um, as you can see Russia is a lot colder than in Finland but they're very um, consistent right there especially with their rainfall. Um, it is a pretty dry season in the winter and then um, there's a decent amount of rainfall in the spring and summer. Um, so the average temperature is from negative 54 degrees Celsius to negative 1 degrees Celsius um, in the winter, which is obviously very, very cold. Um, so the plants and animals have to have adaptations to help them survive in these conditions. And then um, in the summer, they are warmer, um, but still it never reaches a very warm temperature there. Um, so they see about 12 to 30 inches a year of rain there. Um, so pretty wet summer since the majority of the rain is in the summer season. Um, so these are the items that the people would be given for survival. Um, so the first one is a lightweight portable tent. So this would be um, able to be carried in their backpacks due to its um, extremely lightweight. And it would allow for shelter and protection against any storms or wind. Then here is a flashlight, and this is a solar-powered flashlight, and this is because um, you want um, as little waste as possible um, occurring, so we don't want any batteries or anything like that, and also the solar power will allow <coughs> um, the contestants to use their flashlight for the entire time. This thermal sleeping bag is extremely important since it is so cold there, um, so they don't freeze at night. Um, so they'll be much more bearable and survivable there. Um, the pocket knife, this will help with um, hunting, creating tools to hunt, um, prepping plants and animals for consumption, <clears throat> and then snow boots. It's just really important so you can kind of travel in the snow, um, not slip and slide, and just keep your feet warm so that um, you don't get hypothermia. And then weatherproof matches. Uh, this is really important because there is so much snow and in the winter and then so much um, rain in the summer here. Um, it's really important that they're weatherproof and also with all the storms there. Um, these matches would allow cooking of um, any plants and animals and just a, like a fire to um, remain warm <clears throat> or provide light um, if the flashlight is not available. Some of the natural resources that they can use um, are fire, obviously, to cook meat and meals <clears throat> and provide uh, warmth during downtime. And then another one is water. And this is also, um, this can be melted down with the fire for drinking water. Um, and it can help when you're trying to cook or sanitize something. Um, like the boiling water can help with that. Um, over to fire. Then wood, since there's so many trees in a coniferous forest, obviously, um, this can be used to make fires and can be used um, into tools, so into like knives or spears or anything for hunting, like bow and arrow. Um, and then solar energy can be used to um, power the flashlight that they're given um, that goes off of solar energy. Some native plants that they can consume are the thimbleberry, nukta rose, big hazelnut, and salal. Um, the thimbleberry grows in the summer, so that's one of its conditions that allows it to grow in this environment is that it only um, grows during the warmer seasons. And um, it sort of has those like, red flowers up there. Then the nukta rose, so this is what it'll look like in the summer, and its adaptations that it can survive in the coniferous forest is that... Um, 
after this pink flower blossoms and it gets cold again, then it forms these like red rose hips, um, which last through winter and it allows the flowers to bloom again in the summer. The big hazelnut can look uh, kind of funny because that's like the closed flower, um, but it requires very little water so it can survive um, in those winter seasons where precipi uh, precipitation is very low. And this um, plant can live, survive in temperatures down to negative 50 degrees Celsius. So, and then Salal, um, it's able to survive in a coniferous forest because it can survive in a shade. Um, since there's so much shade because of the trees and everything in the forest, this is a really good adaptation for um, this plant to have. Then we've got six animals that are able to be eaten and sort of like hunted um, while these contestants are on survival. So the first is snowshoe hare, and none of these are endangered, um, so they won't be harming the ecosystem. Um, but a snowshoe hare has very thick coats to stay warm during the winter, um, but its main adaptation to this land is its um, white fur, which serves as camouflage during the um, winter in the snow. And then the Arctic fox is in a similar situation where the white fur allows it to blend in um, stay unseen from predators. The salmon right here um, can survive in the water because um, it can go from fresh to salt water. Um, it sort of allows it to be in like both the oceans or the streams and um, move around. And um, it has four sets of gills that allow it to move between these two types of water. Um, then we've got three more animals that the contestants can hunt. So the first one is deer. Um, and so deer have um, a winter coat that sort of grows in uh, when the seasons are changing and it's getting a lot colder. And so this consists of like thicker and longer body hair, um, which kind of keeps them insulated. And then their neutral colors allow them to blend in with the environment and not be seen um, when they're in like the wooded areas. Then the pika, which is a little like a rodent, um, they have fur on their paws, and this allows them to move across the snow and sort of grip on and just move quickly across the snow. And they also have very thick fur. Um, their small size and neutral coloring allows them to be like unseen by predators, as well as the deer, except they're obviously much smaller than the uh, caribou. And so these have two sort of sets of hair, and so the outer set of hair is hollow and so it allows them to float in the water and able to swim and they also have very like wide cat uh, hooves um, which allows them to move quickly in the water as well. And then for shelter I was thinking that it would be really effective for um, contestants to make a sort of wooden teepee kind of thing um, as demonstrated here in these two photos. Uh, they would be able to use like all the branches since there's a lot of wood um, around them. They can use their natural resources and um, the materials are like readily available. They don't have to really go looking for these because they should be in the forest. Um, they can use the skin of animals that they've hunted to sort of create a more, um, to like block the wind from coming in or rain or snow um, in between the cracks in the wood. And or leaves or branches of pine needles, um, sort of for insulation. And um, this will form like a stronger shelter, but also the materials for this are readily available. So if they do need to move, they will be able to create another TV um, wherever they need to go. And um, I keep them, their stuff safe during the day and from blowing away, sort of mark a place for them to return to. And it would keep them much safer from storms and harsh weather and winds and uh, would allow them a place to sleep and not be um, sought out by animals hunting at night. Some of the animals that are kind of a threat or like organisms um, to the survivor contestants are polar bears, brown bears, and the arctic fox. Um, polar bears are obviously very aggressive animals and since their habitats and prey are becoming endangered and threatened, um, they're likely going to be even more protective and aggressive now. Um, but the contestants would need to avoid them pretty much at all costs because um, they're unpredictable. Um, but if someone did encounter one, they would need to be very strategic in their hiding. They can climb up a tree as polar bears are um, way too much to be able to 
Uh, if they're like too heavy to be able to go up the trees, they wouldn't be able to lift themselves up. So you have to wait it out. In a tree, most likely, if you did encounter a polar bear, um, the brown bears pose as a threat to the contestant's safety um, because they are extremely dangerous with their um, sharp teeth and large jaws. And um, they do compete for some of the same um, prey that the people or the contestants would be looking for as well. So contestants should also stay as far away as they can from the bears, um, especially the cubs, because that can provoke an extremely aggressive response from the mother. Um, if they do happen to see one, they can seek shelter in their teepee, um, or they should try to remain as calm as possible before running away, though, um, as this sort of allows the brown bear to remain as unprovoked as possible. The Arctic uh, fox can pose a threat because much of its prey is like um, similar to what the contestants will be hunting, um, so it would serve as competition. And so, um, one thing that the contestants can do is um, make sure that they're looking for prey when no one else is around. Um, and This is a food web, we've got our contestant all the way on the left here. Um, you can see the contestant um, consumes caribou, uh, that pika down here, there's the pika, um, the caribou right here, um, and then the arctic fox, and the snowshoe hare right here. Um, and then we've got a musk ox right here, a polar bear here, a arctic uh, wolf right here, a snowy owl here, brown bear, a lemming, um, snowshoe hare, and pika. So these are sort of the main um, animals in this biome. The human impact of this biome is uh, really dangerous right now. Um, especially climate change, uh, the increasing global temperatures and melting of the snow and ice um, is damaging the habitats of mountainous organisms. Um, in the coniferous forest, um, polar bears are starving because there's no ice for them to hunt off of. Um, animals such as a snowy owl, arctic fox, and arctic hare are in danger um, due to their melting snow, so they no longer have that camouflage that allows them to survive in um, this area. Um, so the contestants on this, uh, this show shouldn't be contributing too much to the issues of climate change because they won't be using any fossil fuels or um, waste while they're there. Um, and this is usually what leads to climate change. So, and then plastic waste is another big problem here. Anywhere that has water, plastic waste is a big issue because um, the marine and also just salmon um, are, can get caught in the plastic. Um, which harms them, and then um, limits their supply for like things like the brown bear and polar bear. But also, if they consume plastic, if they swallow it, then it's in their body, and then it can be passed on to the um, bear or animal that's or whatever's consuming it, and then they're also in harm from the plastic. Um, so contestants would not be allowed to use any plastic during the show because of this, because um, they just really don't need any more waste there. It's extremely dangerous. Um, so everything must either be reusable or biodegradable. Um, and another really big issue is overfishing, um, which is when large commercial companies sort of take like huge nets and just take massive amounts of fish. Um, this can really harm an ecosystem just because it wipes out so many fish. Um, and it also can leave nets and pollution in the water um, which is extremely dangerous, and as said, with the plastic waste, the marine um, animals then sort of have an impact on those in the forest, like mammals. Um, so the contestants on the show, if they do fish, it would be for salmon, and they would have to use their own tools instead of plastic nets or um, boats with, like, gas-run um, motors. So there would be no pollution or anything like that from the overfishing. So here are my sources for uh, this project, and there you go. That's the coniferous forest, and that's how a round of survivor would go there.